In this video, I want to do a review of the WordPress theme that I'm using on my Easy SEO news website, because a lot of people have written to me asking me which one it is and that they think it's really nice and clean. The nice thing I like about it is it's responsive. So if I change the size of the screen, let's say you're looking on a small, thin, narrow thing like a mobile phone or a tablet, then it's responsive and it changes to match the size of the screen. So that's one of the best things about it. It's also very fast and it's highly customizable. And it's probably no surprise then that the name of this theme is Customizer Pro. This is an individual page on my site. You can see that the headline actually shrinks down as we scroll down to make more room for the main content. We've got breadcrumb navigation at the top, the title with number of comments. You can include the author details and some of the other things like tags below there, but I've actually got that turned off. On this particular page, I've got a right hand sidebar. The main content is over on the left, the large window on the left. And then underneath, I've got recent posts, which is done with a plugin. The author bio box is actually built into the theme. And then we've got the comments and underneath that we've got nested comments and then a footer and the footer has three widgetized areas to it as well but I want to show you briefly how this theme works let me just go to the home page quickly because the home page is slightly different the home page doesn't actually have any sidebar but what it does have is a slider at the top and that again is built into the theme and I'll show you how to do that in this video we've got these featured articles featured posts and you can have as many or as few of those as you want. I've actually got it set up for a, three rows of three columns. And then I've got some content because my homepage is set up as a static homepage as opposed to just viewing the recent posts. This is an advert from or for my web hosting company or not my web hosting company, but the web hosting company that I use. And that's that is actually done with a plugin. If I just refresh, you'll see that that is an animated banner. There we go. And then down here we've got recent posts and that again is a plugin. So that's what the theme looks like after I've customized it. What I've done is I've set up another website that has some demo content on it. And this is the one. And this is the default template pretty much as it comes out of the box. So I've installed it, Customizer Pro. I'm going to go over to the appearance and Click on Customize so we can come to the Customize window and then I can show you where all the magic happens. Okay, the Customizer screen has now opened and you'll see here on the preview window we've got some hints. Now if I was to open the site in a browser you'll see I've also got those hints on there. Here's another one down there and that's it for there at the moment. But you can see these hints on there. Those are only because I'm signed in and you can turn them off down here in the advanced option. They're the front end placeholders and help blocks. We can just turn those off and then they will disappear from the preview and also from the site. And we just need to save that. And then if we go over to the site itself, we should see that that actually disappears now. Okay. So let's go back to the customize page and I can go back to the main customize menu with this little back arrow. And I'm actually in the advanced options, so I can go back again to the main options. And the very first thing I usually do is I change the color scheme because the color ske scheme is not one I like. And to do that, we go down to global settings and skin. And then I'm going to just select black so that everything starts off a more normal color. And you can see there that we've got things changing to black. And while we're in the global settings, you can change the site name and tagline if you like. You can upload a fav icon directly into the settings here if you want. The fav icon is the one that appears, if I just bring this down a little bit, appears in your web browser up here in the tab. So you can change that if you want to. You've also got the option of uploading an image logo, but beware that the image logo is only a small logo on here, so you'll have to try it and see what it looks like. I don't personally use one on my sites. So let's just go down the other global settings that we've got. The first one 
is Google Fonts. We can choose an overall font for the site if you like. And depending on what you like, there are a number of different fonts you can have. And you can see that the fonts on the site change accordingly. One that I like is, let me see if I can find it. Here we are, Source Sans Pro. I particularly like that one. And I also like to have the minimum size on my site a little bit bigger, maybe 20 or 22. So we can go back. Remember, as you're going along, you should save and publish. I'm going through this quickly, so I'm not going to be doing that. The social links, you can see this is an RSS icon. You can also put in other links, let's say, webmaster at my domain. So I put in an email address. We should now see the email logo appear there. While that's working away in the preview, let me also put in a Twitter There we go. So we've got an email. Somebody can contact you through the email, contact you through Twitter. You've also got Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Tumblr, Flickr, and various other things you can include in there as well. So that's social links. And the next global setting is link styles and effects. And this you can define how links on your site work in general. So for example, if you want, you can display a little icon next to external links so people know they're leaving the site. And you can also force external links to open in new windows and there's this fade effect as well but you can have a look at that titles and icons now this is something that i'm not that keen on let me see if i can go to a page and i can show you what they looks like i'm just going to click on a post in the preview window because it's easier to explain when i get to a post okay and we're now here on the post and you can see here's the title and next to it there's this pencil and i actually don't like that and also next to the folder so next to the categories, there's a folder icon. I can actually delete both of those just by unchecking that. But you've got more options there if you want to play and have some and not the others. The next one, image settings, you can have the built-in, the light box. In other words, when you have an image and somebody comes and clicks on the image, the image enlarges in a separate window in, in a light box fashion. You can have that. And there's various other options there for images as well. I'm going to run through these really quickly because there's some more important things I want to show you. The authors, this is where you can have the author bio box shown on posts. I've got it selected there. The reason we haven't got an author bio box on this is simply because I haven't entered author details. I haven't entered the author name, author description, set it up with a gravatar so that I actually get an image showing as well. But if I go over to my Easy SEO News site, you can see what it would look like. Let's scroll down to, oops. Let me scroll down to where the author bio box is. There we go. You can see it's got the image from the Gravatar and also the description from the description in that particular user profile in WordPress. So you can do that with authors. Let's go out to the main settings again. One of the really powerful settings we have is this font customizer. And what it allows you to do is to change the fonts for every single aspect on your web page. And if you find something that there isn't a setting for in here, you can actually create your own settings. An example of that would be list items. I noticed when I was setting this up for another site, it didn't have settings for the LI HTML tag, but under custom controls, I can actually add the LI tag and set the custom settings for that. So it's not a big deal. Let's just have a look what we can set though. We've got Body settings, so default website font, and we can change that. Let's say we want to change the default website settings. And again, we can choose from all sorts of fonts. Let's just say railway regular. And you can see it's now changing over here. This text is actually a gray, as you can see, but it's easy enough to change to black. And we can change the default size of the text and line height as well. So how it's spaced out. We've got all these other settings as well for the body text. We've also got very similar options for setting the headings. So we can put up here, we've got the site header or site title, I should say. Let's just click on that. 
and we can increase the size of that if we want to. Okay, we could change the color if we wanted to, but I'm going to leave it. Okay, see I'm changing it there. I'm going to leave it at black and you can set various text formats, transformations, site description as well. I've only got a tiny little site description there of demo site, but again, I can, I can change the fonts. So individually, I can change the fonts on every single item on the site. Sliders and featured pages. This is the, the slider here. We can change the settings of that. Featured pages are down here, so we can change the fonts for those as well. We can change the fonts for posts and pages. You can see we can change the actual text, the post titles, post list titles, archive blogs, and so on. H1 headers, H2, and you can modify the fonts of absolutely everything. I'm going to leave that for now because I want to go back and show you some other stuff. I'm just going to save it so I don't lose anything that I've already shown you. Okay, and then I want to go back up to the previous menu and we've just had a look at the font customizer and global settings. Under the header, we've got design layout. We can say how we want this header to be laid out. So logo tiled centered, you can have logo title on the left. We don't actually have a logo, but the title will move over to the left. Okay, we can have the title on the right. I always usually put it title centered. You can see at the very top, I think, let me just bring this down a bit. You can see at the very top, there's a black border at the top. That is this display top border. We can get rid of that if we don't want to. I'm going to put it back. We can even remove the tagline if we don't want to. We can decide whether we want these social links in the header. This is still updating, previewing. But look, we can remove the social links from the header if we want to. Let's just put them back. And the menu, you can see over here, this is the menu at the moment. Well, there's no menu assigned. All of this is inside a box. And you can remove that box easy enough. And then you've got these other options. What happens to the header when you scroll down the page? Does it shrink in size? like you're seeing there. Okay, so those are the some of the heading options, the ones that I tend to use more. Let's go back to navigation menus. And in the navigation menus, we can decide which menus we want. And I've got some, again, some demo men, men, menus here. Okay, so I've selected the menu. Down here, you can say how you want the menu to appear. Let's say we want it regular horizontal, which is similar to how I've got it over on my Easy SEO News website. We've got the menu here and it drops down when there's more items in that menu. Let's go back to this. Now you can see there we've got the menu at the top. And of course we can change all the colors of the menus and the fonts. You can see the fonts look a little bit stranger. We can change all those in the font section that we've already looked at. So you've got complete control over that as well. Let's go back and have a look at the content. And the first options here we've got are featured pages. And these are the ones down here, okay, where you can have the featured image and then title and description. You can decide where you want it. I've got it actually after the header. So we've actually got the, sl the, the header, header and then the sli slider underneath. Then the featured pages go there. You can decide here featured page number. I've got three in this demo. On my Easy SEO News site, I've got nine and you can decide what's how many you want across in a block and you've got a lot of other options in there as well where you can display the titles or not you can change the button text you can change the button colors and everything else as well let's go back and have a look at the next option front page do you want the latest posts or do you want a static page we can also say we don't want sidebars, which is what I've got on the home page. This is just for the home page, or I could have sidebars if I wanted. That's my choice. And at the moment, we've got this demo slider, but we can actually create our own slider as well. Or let's just remove the slider altogether. Okay, and now the slider has gone completely. And you can see here we've got the option to create a slider as well. Let's go down and have a look at the next set of customizations. Page layout, posts and page layout. I've got it set as a left sidebar, but we can change that to right sidebar or two sidebars, right and left, or no sidebars. So complete control over that. 
post lists and archives, we can customize those. Single posts, do we want to display a post thumbnail? Don't display, or do we want to display it? You can actually display it as a full width image before the title and various other options in there as well. Breadcrumbs, do you want breadcrumbs showing? I've got them there and you saw them over here on my Easy SEO knows website. There's the breadcrumbs that are built into the theme. Post metas, this is the information that will appear quite often under here. So things like the author and so on, you can control what post metas are shown. And as you can see down here, it gives you the options of which ones you want to select. So select the metas to display. So we've got display hierarchical taxonomies, in other words, categories, display non-hierarchical taxonomies, in other words, the tags, publication, the author, and up any time that the post has been updated, it can display that date as well. So there's lots of options there for the post metas. The next option down here is galleries. That's not something that I've used, so I'm not sure what that is. Paragraphs, we can enable drop caps in paragraphs. But again, that isn't something that I use on my own sites. Then we've got some options for comments. We can say, do we want comments to appear as small or big bubbles at the top of the posts? And also the bubble color. So you can choose skin color or you can choose a custom color. And then there's a few other comment sections, comment options down there as well. Then post page navigation. I can show you that by going to a post on the site. If we scroll to the end, we've got this post navigation. So this one is going back to an article called Your Choices for Sunless Tanning Products. And you can turn that on or off and also decide where that's going to go. So that's the content home grid sidebars. We've got options for sidebars, including whether we want to include social icons in the sidebars. Those are the same social icons that are found in the header. And we've got responsive settings because this is a responsive design, as we saw earlier. And then we've got footer options. And if I just scroll down to the footer area of my site, we've got footer global options. We can include social links down there. You can see them at the bottom. Stick the footer to the bottom of the page. Okay, it's at the very bottom, of the, stuck at the bottom of the page when you scroll down, display the back to top arrow. Here it is over in the right hand side that takes you back up to the top of the page. So you can change all that. Footer credits, you'll actually notice that Customizer Pro come with their own little credit in there, but you can disable that by unchecking this display designer credits and you can put your own copyright text in there as well. Let's go back from footer. Menus allows you to choose the menus. Widgets, this actually allows you to put widgets in in this customizer area. So let's say we wanted to have a custom menu in widget area one. Widget area one is on the left, widget area two is in the middle, and widget area three is on the right. So let's just say we want to add a custom menu. I can select the custom menu. Which one do I want? I'm not sure what that photos one is because it's off uh, another website, but let's have a look. Okay, so then we've got this custom menu added into the footer. So we can actually add those in the widget section directly in this customizer area. And then we've got advanced options. And there's one advanced option which is particularly useful that I, I find I use a lot. And that is the custom CSS. Because all of the customizing we've done so far, there's certain things we haven't been able to change. Like the background color of here isn't white and I'd actually prefer it to be white. And that's really controlled by the CSS on the website. So we can actually go in and we can actually add in our own custom CSS. Now I've already got some CSS that I use on my sites which I've written for my websites. So I can just paste that in. And once it's pasted in, we should see the preview change. Okay, and we've still got a slight issue there. And they've updated the plugin. We've still got the background color here that's not as I want it. But you can see down here, we've now got a white background. And I'm going to just click on this to open a post and we can have a look at the back of the background of the post should all be white now. Okay, this font is all a bit jumbled up. So if I was doing this properly, I would increase the line spacing on there. But let's go back to the home page and we'll sort out this issue. Now, one way you could do it is using Google Chrome, like I do, and using the Chrome Inspector, which is F12 on the keyboard, selecting the item, finding what class it is, and creating CSS to overwrite the class that is used in the normal style sheet for the, for the theme. But this particular problem is actually 
more easily solved because the background color is set in the main settings. If I can find which ones they are. We want the featured pages. There we go. If we scroll down here, we've got background color and I can just select white, save and publish. And then you can see that the background or the feature pages is now correct. While we're over here, I realize I didn't show you how to change these featured pages. It's simply a case of selecting them here. If we scroll down, we've got featured page selection. And because I've got three featured pages, I've got room here to insert three of them. And I can just choose the articles. These can be posts or pages and select them there. And then they will appear as you'll see over here in the preview. Okay, we've got no image there. That's simply because there isn't a, there isn't a featured image for that particular post. If I go into the post and add one, you'll see that the image then is added. Okay, this first post is about treating insomnia. If I go over to that article, go down to featured image, and then I would add. Let's just go and choose something from the library. It's not really that important which one we choose. Let's just choose. Let's just choose that and insert that. You see, I've now got a featured image. If I update and then go back to the preview, let's see if I can just refresh this. Okay, now we have the featured image in that one. So to get these images appearing, just go in and add a featured image. And that's all there is to that. One final thing before we leave, I've shown you quite a lot here, is that down here at the end we've got, because I've got posts as my home page, I've got these posts in sort of a grid format and it's not very pretty in my view, but over on the content home, let's go back to the main custom here, content home posts grid, you can see the post lists and then we scroll down a bit, we see we've got the grid layout selected, but we can have alternate thumbnail layout. And then your posts will appear like this. If there's a thumbnail as well, you can see that the thumbnail is now shown with the excerpt from the post. And these will be alternating right and left as you go up. So you can have that layout as well. And that's for any pa any archive page, I think, or any list of posts like you get on the home page. So that's a very, very quick introduction to Customizer Pro. It's highly customizable and it's fast. It looks great on all devices and you can just install it once and you can be sure that your website is going to look great on mobile phones, on tablets and on computers. So I recommend you have a look at it. There is also a free version. I'm using the pro version here so there are a few more options but the free version is also a very good starting point especially just to get used to the theme and to see whether your site will actually look good with it. So you can go over using the link below to grab the demo or the trial theme as far as I know, it doesn't run out. It's just limited in some of the features.